Here we have the completed table for all the symmetries that we were talking about before. Right away, there should be a few things that you notice. First, and this is very obvious, doing the R0, composing it with any other move in any order, doesn't change that move. If you do a horizontal flip, then a rotation by zero, you end up with a horizontal flip. If you do a rotation by 180, then do a rotation by zero, you get a rotation by 180. That's very straightforward, because the rotation by zero is just picking it up, putting it right back down where you had it. So, of course, it's going to be whatever other move you do that's the important one. More interesting, though, is that this table is divided up into quadrants. We can imagine drawing a line right down the middle there and across like this. And there's distinct things happening in each one of these four pieces. This one should be completely clear. If you do a rotation, then do another rotation, you end up with a rotation. Perhaps a little bit less obvious is the fact if you do a reflection, then do another reflection, you always get a rotation there as well. Now, if you think about that for a few seconds, you should be able to tell why that has to be the case. So again, I suggest that you pause the video, put a little bit of thought into that before going on. If you do a rotation and a reflection, in either order, do the reflection, then the rotation, or do the rotation, then the reflection, either way you end up with a reflection. Perhaps a little bit less obvious, but when you start looking at things, you notice that every single row and every single column has all eight of the elements, all eight of the symmetries, in some order. Here we have four different rotations, the four different reflections, all in that row. Here we have the four different reflections, the four different rotations, all in that row. The four different reflections, the four different rotations, all in that column. That's a very interesting and very important property that we'll discuss in greater detail later. This table is what we call a Cayley table. And it's a very convenient way to talk about the different operations on what we're also going to call a group. In the next video, we'll define formally what a group is, but it's all based on these types of properties that I'm talking about right now. One thing, though, that is not a property that's worth pointing out is that the order... Let's look at what happens if we do a flip across the main diagonal and then do a rotation by 90. So rotation by 90, flip across the main diagonal, is right here. That's the same thing as flipping across a horizontal line. If I do those in the other order though, if I do the rotation by 90, then flip across the main diagonal, that's the same as flipping across a vertical line. For this particular group, this particular Cayley table, it's not commutative. It's going to be very important to realize when things are commutative and when things aren't. Let's go ahead, now that we've thought about these properties a little bit, let's go on and in the next video we'll formally define what a group is.